Hello, welcome to the Oshkosh Poet Laureate podcast. I'm Tom Cannon, the first Poet Laureate of Oshkosh, and hopefully there are many, many more. Uh, thank you for joining me today. Whenever I get a chance, I show uh, young people a video of Oprah talking about gratitude. I actually find that many of uh, the young people don't even know who she is. But if you're from an older generation, such as myself, she's probably the most famous person in the world. She had that TV show. She has a magazine. She has her own network. Um, she's just an icon. And she tells of starting out each day with being thankful. She tells us how you're going to end up better focusing on the $2 in your pocket instead of the money that you don't have. Always focus on what you do have. She gives her own experience of looking for something to be grateful and how it brought opportunities into her life. I preface this video by describing how Oprah had been abused and she had to grow up in her grandma's house, grew up during very poor, uh, and faced discrimination. Last year I held an open mic and I knew every one of those poets there except for Mobaya Sharif. Uh, she is a Wisconsin poet with ties to Oshkosh. Uh, her performing her poems was very moving and enjoyable. One of her poems was about Oprah's abuse. It was a stirring poem in which Oprah addresses the family member that abused her. So while I like to focus on the message that poetry gives people an opportunity for gratitude, the poem I heard was a, po a powerful reminder that poetry is often about pain. The one of the va and that one of the values of poetry is to express pain so that we can have a discussion on terrible events because they do exist in our world. A book an article, or an article about Oprah's life would be an important read, but a poem goes through the emotions that someone had towards their abuser, and it's immediate and powerful. This is a cliche, but it does communicate heart to heart. Poetry cuts to the heart of the matter. To make an analogy, historians study Patrick Henry's speech, uh, but only the part, the only part that the rest of us read, to, read or need to know about is the part, give me liberty or give me death. Like that saying, poems are the takeaway from this story. If it wasn't stealing, I'd read my boy's poem. But instead, I'm just going to read one of my poems. I've had my share of hardships, but overall, I'm very blessed. And I have had that, not had trauma in my life. My poem is about, however, not feeling like I was a good enough parent. Uh, and it's titled Boy in Pajamas. Boy in Pajamas, hand on the mouse, jumps to the action of an online world. The collector of badges powers up with coins and weapons. Each level provides more armor. The believer in magic wants you to conjure and dispel everything just to experience the charm. But you know your parental spells are the o are only misdirection. Like the Superman on his pajama top, you try to be the hero because he believes. He believes so much so that you try to collect his powers for a figmentary cachet to protect him. But you are not Superman. You are not an avatar. Your weapons are only what you have already failed with. This poem was published in Verse Wisconsin, issue 110. Uh, that uh, journal is now defunct, but it was a great, uh, great resource for, for Wisconsin. And I hope my poem got to the heart of the matter how I was feeling. I could have written an essay on parenting, but I could not write an engaging one. I didn't want to. I just wanted to share how I could not live up with my, to my child's view of me. And I wanted to connect with other parents without boring them with the details. I just wanted to get to my feelings and share that with them in, in case they are feeling the same thing. Uh, so thank you for uh, joining me today. Have a good day.